yesterday it was it was extraordinary theater, political theater, uh, uh, governance drama, and public, uh, you know, safety, uh, uh, you know, financial wealth uh, concerns, uh, all wrapped up at once. You were talking about just earlier on the show how uh, your choice of music reveals something about your character. If we were to uh, to take a look at what they did yesterday. And consider the, the music from Music Man. Ronnie Howard singing the song, The Wells Fargo Man, Man is Coming Down the Street. I wonder what he's coming for. You wonder what he, what he was coming for. Uh, is, uh, uh, he went in there completely unprepared. He had a flak drafted public relations script that he read off of that, that was contrite and seemed authentic and then was melted uh, in the easiest of questions that came his way, questions that should have been anticipated. Uh, when did he know? What did he know? When? Who right. knew what? When? Uh, uh, he wasn't prepared to uh, to deal with the um, Jeff. Uh, of course, the, the the clawback issues and well, and you managed to unify this highly fractious right. committee. Uh, it wasn't just the Democrats; the Republicans just as harsh. Hey, Jeff, it, explain this though to us because it's a, it is a true governance issue. He deferred oftentimes in his answer and suggested that it really is the board. It was the board's call on his compensation. It was the board's call on whether to fire. People, perhaps it was the board's call on clawbacks, etc. Uh, that is true to some degree, but how much responsibility do you hold to the board? Meaning to say the board should have taken some action ahead of a hearing like that, or does the board say, "Look, we got to hear everything. We want to see where all the chips fall because by the end of this year, they may fall farther than we know, and we need to make a decision based on that." There's a lot of accountability to throw around. Of course, you can add to the equation, where were all the hundreds of regulators embedded in there from the Consumer uh, 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 you know, Financial Protection Bureau, FDIC, and the Federal Reserve? What were all those hundreds of people doing? But yes, it's, it's largely a management failure of management oversight, a ridiculous incentive scheme that also didn't I guess really my make question, no, money. Jeff, my, my question is, is John Stumpf, the board. assuming the, the board is involved in this, is John Stumpf supposed to go to the board and say, look, I'm going to go to this hearing, and they are going to slaughter me. And I need, in advance of that, we need to make some, some decisions so we can say certain things. Maybe, I should, maybe you should uh, you know, say that I'm going to get zero bonus this year, or I'm going to get zero compensation this year, or whatever it's going to be. Or you're going to claw back all the bonuses right. that I have made. Yes. If you take a look at what you know, people are looking at. Is that on him, well. or is that the board, or how do you look at that as a governance issue? It, this, is, this is him. This is somebody, uh, it was like Ken Lewis at Bank of America uh, blaming uh, regulators for what he did. The, the devil made him do it. In this case, he's, he was deferring, throwing the board under the bus. I know for fact, I know for fact that the board was stunned by a lot of that testimony yesterday. Uh, there, there's some of the complexity to this they didn't appreciate till yesterday. They, they surely, uh, uh, they, they should have created an independent investigator. That's what Jamie Dimon did at Bank J.P. Morgan, sir, and, and done very well, of course, with Mary Barra at GM. Uh, here, he's just blinking in the headlights, uh, the spotlights unprepared. Je Jeff, uh, can I be, it's Brian, can I be more direct? If you were the chairman of, of Wells Fargo's board, would you fire John Stumpf? Uh, he certainly should be put on probation. I don't think he'd be shot at sunset. Uh, there should be, Jamie gave up money. People, when they've gotten in trouble, there should be symbolically uh, some punishment, not just the, you know, 5,300 people making $12 an hour, and this guy's making $19 million, and of course, this head of the, of the division, who was perhaps scapegoated, we don't know what her accountability was, but she leaves with $125 million look, ultimately, of bonuses. Ultimately, who, who is the constituency that we care about? Is this, is, does he now, whatever credit, has he lost credibility with the investor community? Because, by the way, the stock, is, the stock has fallen, clearly has uh, lost some value, but now some people are picking it up thinking it's a, a, a good value all of a sudden. So, you may be. They, they, took, they, they took about a, a hit of 10% going into this. So the fact that yesterday was, was marginally up, I don't think should give a lot of cheer. Uh, there's still a little bit of trauma out there. The board should have been hands-on. If, you, if you're on the board of the Home Depot, you have to be a mystery shopper for seven, uh, it, it, at seven stores a quarter outside of your home state. Uh, UPS, they meet, uh, you know, right. folding tables, the board and, and sorting hubs. They need to have more direct access to employees, not have information filtered through them. However, throwing this to the board was ridiculous. He should have anticipated the clawback issue. Under Sarbanes-Oxley, Section 304, he did it in Jim it's only Kramer. the CEO and CFO. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.